CO2 correlation is totally flawed thesis. I don't know, man, I'm not a scientist. I just look at the, at the numbers and I'm like, I don't believe most of it, but uh, whatever. DeFi travel, LFG? Yeah, let's go. Ah, I didn't know that. Leroy says any type of water or waste plastic is fuel source for IREX tech in Canada. Awesome. Canada, I heard you guys got some great carbon, carbon credits that you guys are getting. And you think that's uh, like helping the environment. That sounds good. It works out for you guys. Kathy Topia, I just got here, missed you again. I was listening to a guy's video on Vanguard. Looks pretty good. Looks like uh, the CEO of Vanguard stepped down. And that CEO was replaced by a BlackRock individual. So you know that Vanguard did not want to do the Bitcoin ETF, did not want their customers to be exposed to anything that risky. And now something from BlackRock's in there. So what do you think is going to happen? Ah, Del Norte. Looks like you're an EP and I mean, it's planned. Donations at the JD. Thanks, man. Uh, maybe we should do a, a meetup. I was supposed to be in Puerto Rico yesterday or two days ago but with the thunderstorms and the hurricanes and the tornadoes our flights got canceled so we're stuck here for a little bit i don't know ace is wasn't this i'm sure that ceo was sad taking his massive retirement check it's called a golden parachute and in america it is what all ceos aspire to be John says, Rob, how is this whole thing not a highly coordinated effort by give and big business? Who knows? There's always like layers beyond layers. But the question you have to ask yourself, would you like Elizabeth Warren in office and to retain another six years or however long they go for? Or would you like maybe somebody like John Deaton to take control over there and see where he goes? And the things I just laid out, it's up to you. Now, what happens behind the scenes? You think John's going to be perfect? Probably not because nobody's perfect. Nobody. However, I would just say like this, I like the direction John Deaton's going. I do not like the direction that Elizabeth Warren's going. That's why if I have a chance, I'll go with John Deaton. I can't vote, not in Massachusetts, but that's how it is. The Shaolin says, what's a greater political issue than crypto? Crypto equals freedom, and if you aren't for freedom, you don't have my vote. Very simple. Couldn't have said it best. Serge says, Matic ain't hitting five bucks. They need a major turnaround just like Ada, Dot, and so on. Sadly, I have all three. Yeah, me too. That's why we diversify, right? And, um, you know, we really haven't seen a real parabolic altcoin run. We've seen a meme coin run do pretty well. But as far as like a real, real altcoin run, I don't think we've seen it yet. I think that comes later. So... If you don't like the price, just hang around. It'll change. Hopefully not for the worse. A kick says, don't worry. BlackRock and other powerhouses are all into crypto. All this is noise while everyone gets into position. I'm not worried at all. No, I'm not worried, but I think we can accelerate things. We know that crypto is inevitable. But the question you have to ask yourself is, we know it's inevitable. But is it inevitable in like 20 years? A decade? Or do you want to accelerate everything and get things moving to the end result? Maybe two to three years. Depends. And I think it's, it's, it's the big thing that people always say, like, give me a price prediction on Bitcoin. And you'll hear people say, a million dollars. It's going to a million, blah, blah, blah. I believe that too. But I can't. But the only variable I can't tell you is the time frame. And everybody will tell you the time frame. And so far, they've all been wrong. Well, mostly. And people will talk about a super cycle. They talked about a super cycle last time. That didn't play out, did it? Unless I missed something. And then also a super cycle in 2017. That still didn't play out. And that was two cycles ago. So here we are. And people will say, but this time, definitely going to happen. I don't know. And uh, if it happens, I'll be pleasantly surprised. If it doesn't happen, I will not be surprised. <laughs> and that's why I take profits along the way. That's why I make those rules for myself. Liz sucks, but isn't she and Gary just playing a part like Lord Vader? Well, you have to ask yourself, if, if the powers that be and the banks who really, who really were not very happy that the Biden administration just vetoed that last bill and allowed it to continue, 
And if BlackRock's in, which is the largest asset manager in the entire planet, if all that is happening, then why do you have these people like a Gary Ginsler, like an Elizabeth Warren, like take your pick of whoever else that's out there, kind of stifling innovation? Now that, I think, is the big question. And how long will they be around? Who knows? Ray says, this time is the super, super cycle. <laughs> it could be. I don't know. I sure would like that. That'd be great. So your guy has a shot. He's got a shot. But John will tell you, like even when we were talking, he's like, it's not like I got a wide path to victory. I goes, he says, I have a narrow path. And it's going to be tough. And it's going to be an uphill battle. But he said, I've been doing that my whole life. So nothing's changed. I was like, I can respect that. Yeah, glad I bought SwiftCoin, hoping to load up on more. And if you've had some profits on there, don't forget to take profits and maybe donate a little bit to John Deaton. Just saying. Yeah, it's still green though. Let's see. CC says, I firmly believe that crypto is being slowed down by the Dems until institutions are ready to pull the trigger and full send the market. I think the full send comes this year. Now remember, it's not all Democrats. Uh, it's just the majority of Democrats are not a big fan of crypto. But others have come across the aisle. I mean, look, the last bill that was uh, that went to, to Senate, I think it was a 60 to 38 vote. Uh, HB, what was it, HB 121? I always forget. It's the one that would allow banks to custody crypto without uh, having a one-to-one -one match for uh, money or for dollars. So if they took in Bitcoin at 67,000, they need $67,000 to, to hold that on top of the Bitcoin for the person. Anyhow, they went against that. And uh, you know, that's the, that's a vast majority of, of the Senate. Unfortunately, uh, President Biden vetoed that. And then people say, well, well, don't worry because it's a two thirds vote and then they can override that veto. Well, that's true. So if there's you know roughly a hundred, you need 66 senators, 67, 66, 67 for two thirds, right? So if that's the case, you didn't get that last time. I don't know if you're gonna get it this time. We'll see. Very hard though, when the total administration goes against it. Yeah, look, even Chuck Schumer, who's the uh, majority lead uh, for Senate, is the loudest one right now. And he's pro, well, I don't know if he's pro crypto, but he did vote for that bill, but it was good for banks. And some people will say, well, why would you vote for banks? Why do you want banks to be involved in crypto? How dare you? Because it goes like this. There's a way that things should be, and there's a way that things are going to be. And the way that things should be is everybody should know how to use cold storage devices. Everybody should know how to transfer their crypto. Everybody should know everything about avoiding those scams when they transfer that crypto. But the way it's going to be is totally different. People aren't going to do that because they're lazy. They're going to go to their Wells Fargo bank and say, you know what? I don't trust this. I don't trust myself. You guys do it and I'll pay you a premium. And that's what's going to happen. And then the first time that the bank collapses, which it'll happen, and they're going to lose people's crypto, that will happen. Then they'll blame, they'll blame crypto. We'll figure it out that it wasn't that, obviously. I mean, we'll know firsthand. The normies will figure it out later. And then everybody will say, wow, that's our Mount Gox moment. And they're going to start to think to themselves, what's this cold storage thing I should have done because I lost my life savings last time? That's how I see it. We hear you. Crypto is inevitable, but the profits are more likely overseas. The U.S. will be left in the dust. I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so. I think... I'll tell you this. So we were sitting there talking to our foundation over a consensus and uh, two, two of our lawyers were just talking about things and, and they're involved in a lot of different crypto projects. And I asked them, uh, Fiona, I said, hey, how, does it, how is it working for the crypto projects that are in America? Have you guys given them legal advice to stay in America? She's like, no, we tell them to go across the seas. And, you know, hopefully they can incorporate in Barbados or some other place 
that is very tax friendly, Switzerland, things like that. She's like, we never tell people to stay in the US because it makes no sense for them. And I was like, oh, that sucks. She's like, yeah, she's like, it'll work out later on, but just not right now. And a lot of the, the projects, they're eager to leave. And that's true. But at some point, there's just, like I said, if you take a look at the amount, just in the Bitcoin ETF, in the US, you're looking at around $856 billion. Yeah, $856 billion. And then globally, Bitcoin ETFs, it's like $120 billion. So where do you think all the money's at? It's right here. <laughs> no one can hear your written message. That's accurate. I'm being silenced, Red Panda. I don't think... Well, depending on what you're posting. If you're posting links to something, we're going to silence you. Thank you, moderators. And if you say something that is... Uh, a little bit too colorful, you'll also be silenced a little bit. Like, you know, hateful. I can give you an example, but then my moderators might silence me. So yeah, we usually keep everything up. I can't, and even when people disagree with me, which is a lot, we still keep that up too, because that makes it more fun. Ah, blue. Two-factor occasion, not secure. And Coinbase, my HR bar got hacked. They bypassed the sign-in and the Yubi key. Huh. You know, not that this happens. This actually happened to James, too, over in Invest Answers. He lost his Twitter account, even though he had, had two-factor authentication. I think it was Yubi key as well. So one of two things is happening. Either there is hackers are getting around Yubi key, which I hope that's not the case, or two, somebody in your immediate circle, use your YubiKey and stole all your stuff. But with James, I don't know why anybody would do that for his uh, Twitter account. It doesn't make any sense. Great show. Thank you. Fair and balanced. Fair and great stewards. That's right. Banks are not needed for Bitcoin to blow up. No, it's not. And we don't need anything for it to blow up, right? Do we need, here's, a, here's another question. Do we need the ETF for Bitcoin to blow up? No. Did we need positive legislation for it to blow up in the EU? No. But it helps. And everything helps. And again, it all comes on the, down to time frames. Do you want to wait 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Or do you want to accelerate by kind of having some strange bedfellows? That's just it. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, uh, hello. Ruben says, is anyone looking at BlackRock, Fidelity, Wales, wanting crypto to slow down so they can acquire more money, rule politics? They've had plenty of time, let's be honest. And um, it's been pretty much bouncing around that uh, 67, 69,000 area for quite some time if they can't figure it out but i've always heard this ever since i got in 2017 like oh the institutions in the background are just you know really wanting it to to stay suppressed so they can buy more yeah maybe i guess <sighs> i don't know <laughs> it's funny I'm sure it wasn't hard to social engineer James. The security question was, who do you love most? And the answer is obviously Solana. <laughs> that must be a Libra, fair and balanced. I voted for both. I voted for Dems. I voted for Republicans in my, in my day. Now I live in Puerto Rico, so I can't vote for the president. I can vote for maybe Senator. I'm not for sure but I don't really care about that. If anyone wants to silence me, what happens, Leak, here are historical records, screenshots of an in, in case in coin seven days ago. I don't think you can actually do screenshots in the chat. I tried importing my ledger wallet to base and was surprised I was able to move coins without the ledger approval. Ooh, wow. Yeah, I don't... 
don't really like that too much. T-Bird says, don't, don't keep anything on exchanges unless trading. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big trader. -er. Most of everything's in tangent uh, and ledger. So that's it. A click says, I voted Republican my whole life until 2020. I'm so mad the party went off the rails. I hear that a lot. And trust funds. I think that's it. Um, do you trust the Coinbase wallet? No, it's a hot wallet. Why would I trust it? TCA, Rob, when you do your DCA metric, is it $100 per asset or $100 in total per DCA? I'm always confused when you present that art. If we're talking about this, you're talking about this? Where we go to DCA and I put in, it's $100 a week. But that's hundred dollars a week in Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Solana. So I'm putting hundred bucks in Bitcoin per week, hundred bucks in Ethereum, hundred bucks in BNB, hundred bucks in Solana, which is a lot of money. But you don't have to pick all these different cryptos. I'm just showing you which ones have done better over time. So like, like just take this one. We've been doing this since September 1st, 2023. The reason I picked September is because September is historically speaking, the worst month, both traditional finance and crypto. And uh, I was wanting it to go down, but it didn't. It was actually last year, it was like the best September. I don't, don't know how that worked out, but sure. And if we just take a look at this over time, which one do you think does the best? It is near protocol at 241%. You invested 3,800. You invested 300 in Nira, 300 in the Seoul, 300 in BNB, 300 in Doge. And you're up a lot on near. On Sol, you're doing pretty good. BNB, Doge, ETH, Bitcoin. Link, Dot, and ADA is trailing at a whopping 12.3% increase. Congratulations. I don't even think that you beat the S&P 500. So I hope that answers your question. Burke, update on tangent staking. It's supposed to happen this month. They said quarter two. That's April, May, June, right? So it looks like June. Now you can you can stake in Tangem, but it's not native staking. You have to use uh, Wallet Connect, which I'm not a big fan of. So we'll see. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Be able to stake right from your Tangem card. Doodle says, will I trust for Roth IRAs uh, delist any old coins like EOS and not modern coins like injectable. I don't think they're going to delist any of those old ones, but they are supposed to add. They told me when I met with them in consensus that uh, they're looking to add 30 more cryptos. That's pretty good. I finally bought Near. Rand convinced me from banter. Man. I always knew Near was going to be good. I said this many times. This was in 2022 when. Sweatcoin came out, and Sweatcoin didn't do so hot as I thought it would, but it was amazing to me to take a Web2 app, which had over 140 million users globally. It was the top five health and fitness app globally, and of course, it would fluctuate. Sometimes it'd be six, sometimes it'd be three, whatever, and they took that 140 million and took them from Web2 to Web3. No hiccups, no problems, no shutdowns. No outrageous fees, just worked. I was shocked. And I, I told Oleg, the, the co-founder, I'm like, yeah, that'll never work. I don't know near, I don't know what they're doing. Sounds good, I don't know why you guys picked them. Doesn't seem like a smart move. Wrong again. And ever since there, that was, I wanna say June, July, 2022. That's when I said near's great. And I was investing heavily since then. So far, so good. Sharding, you know, yeah, they have active sharding, which is pretty good. Ah, 
Cody's got a good one. Two tangent wallets, the way to go. One for DeFi, one that's through a drilling, no swaps, wallet connect, et cetera. I never thought of that. It's a pretty good idea, actually. Have two, one that you connect to, one you don't do anything. If you're looking for a tangent wallet, there's a link in the description. You get 10% off. And also I have a video on how to set it up. It's very simple. It's like, it's like brain dead easy symbol. Hmm. So near yet so far away. Mr. X says, don't import your cold wallet seed phrase into a hot wallet. Only that in case of emergency. True. Be careful about RAN is a straight shill, but NIR is a great project, though I also have it. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, over there in Banter, they talk about a lot of projects. Some work out, some don't. What are you going to do? They've had some good calls, like Tuker, Tuker Curls, and I still like that project. I know, like, it's been fluctuating, but it's funny. And actually, all the, uh, the people that come on and for their sponsorships, they should take the funds from the sponsors and do buybacks and burns for the token. So over time, that's going to do pretty well. Uh, oh, pay, pay says, ran is bought and paid for. Eh. We all serve some kind of master, right? The future is near. Rob, have you ever used uh, staking an Exodus wallet? No. If so, how was it? I've never used it. Uh, maybe people in the comments can tell you. I've never used it myself. I've used Ledger, and it's a, it's a reasonable experience. Everything's very safe, never gotten hacked. I will tell you, like, out of all the wallets I've had, I've never had any of them hacked, which is amazing to me. Even the hot, call, hot storage ones or hot wallets. Mr. X says, you would love not with Gary. I think not with Gary, what you guys do is a part of the proceeds and the revenue that you generate, you actually pay for lawsuits and legislation against the SEC and give to certain organizations, which sounds like a pretty good thing. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. Thoughts on Chainlink? Chainlink's great. I don't know why it doesn't go up more. Again, if real world asset is, assets are a narrative and they've partnered with JP Morgan and BNY Mellon and they've already done cross-border uh, transfers with the RWAs, I don't see why it doesn't blow up. It just doesn't. But that's the problem with being like a top, I think they're still in the top 10. I could be wrong, maybe top 15, is that their market cap is so high, it takes a while to move them. Did you get on a pith? Pith is, uh, speaking of oracles, which Chainlink is more starting to be like, people are actually building on Chainlink now. It's almost like a layer one. So with Pith, Pith is an oracle on Solana. I've gotten a little bit, not that much. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, very nice. Red Panda Pie, never used Exodus. I just live in hope and pray Phantom wants. <laughs> yeah, that's a good wallet. I like Phantom. Crypto Pew Pew, Rob, do you watch the two videos on YouTube? Constantly, constantly. What I like about them, remember when The Daily Show was funny? I mean, Jon Stewart came back and it's, 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 it has, some, has its moments. I like Jon Stewart. But it kind of reminds me of like, there's a couple of times when they've done that like, that like Daily Show type of, of comedy and it's really good, really funny. And then of course the AI generated voices are great. Um, but yeah, I watch them all the time. And then like, again, meme coins are worthless. Tuker is a meme coin, but I do like that aspect of, well, at least it's entertaining. And of course the revenue that we generate, we burn it for and do, or we do buybacks and burns. So I'm like, that's you're way ahead of other things. So yeah, I'll go with that. Thanks for not being like Bitboy. Did you guys know I met, I met him? Finally, it's been, I've been in this game for like five years. And I, found, I met him at a, some random hotel walking down a hallway. And I said, I go, hey, man, I'm rooting for you. Like I said, like, hey, we've all got demons. We're all de dealing with something. Hope it works out for them. It's not easy. Uh, let's see. Dana says, hey, hey, I'm new. 
congratulations. You couldn't have picked a better time to come into crypto. Some people are so, so lucky. Dana, congratulations. If you're new to crypto or if you're new to the, the channel, new to crypto, I think you picked the right time, right before things start to really take off. Uh, new to the channel, you haven't really missed much. I think you're just fine. Right place, right time. Shallon says, there's so many narratives that people get fooled by in crypto. If you can see the forest of the trees, you'll see the answer is Bitcoin. I mean, if you look at it, in all respects, I mean, Bitcoin does have, for me, it's one of those that has the greater social good, the greater fundamentals, the most battle-tested, and uh, the most acceptance. I per you, you can't deny most acceptance as far as like when people get into crypto. People say, no, no, no. Ethereum is the most accepted. No, no, no. Bonk is the most accepted because of the community. I don't think that's true. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's Bitcoin. Just look globally when all the ETFs kind of come through, what do they go for? They're not going for Pepe. They're like, you know what? We'll go for Bitcoin because institutions want it. People want it. It gets us out of the system. There's massive inflation going on a quantitative easing across the world. We can use this. The basics way to, to, to look at Bitcoin is what I, what I try to tell people. And I don't even tell them that much anymore because it's just like, if you don't get it, I don't have time for you. I say is like, look, unless you start to buy Bitcoin, then everything that you are buying now will continue to go up in price. The only time that it will go down in price is if you hold Bitcoin for four years or more. I don't care if it's a car. I don't care if it's food. I don't care if it's real estate. I don't care what it is. Everything will go down in Bitcoin and everything else will go up and your purchasing power decreases. And then like, what I, what I know about Bitcoin? I'm like, I don't want to tell you, but just start there. And don't blame me if it goes, if uh, there's some volatility. That's it. Digital gold. Desert dog. Digital gold. Yeah. Look for smaller caps. Smaller the caps, the higher the risk. <laughs> Even Egan says, I like John Stewart, tells everything we need to know about you. If you can surmise everything from one statement, I suppose so. Agreed. Panda. Being a maxing of anything is a weakness. Yeah, I have to agree too. I have to agree. Uh, let's see. Serge says, don't you think iTrust should expand what they offer outside of crypto? Crypto, I'd love to fly crypto into like VO and bears markets and go back into crypto and bull markets to avoid the downside thoughts. You know, within your Roth IRA, for iTrust, you know, you know that you can trade within your Roth IRA and it's tax free, right? So if you do it on exchanges, let's say that you, you bought Bitcoin at 10,000, it goes up to 70,000. And you're like, okay, well, I'll just put that into stable coins or dollars or whatever. Let's just say stable coins because it's a crypto. And that's it. And then I'm, you know, I'm up 60,000. That's my profit. That's a taxable event because you transferred it from one asset into another type of asset. So people first get confused about that, but if you do the same thing within a Roth IRA, you buy Bitcoin at 10,000, goes up to 70,000, and you take that and go, okay, I'm gonna get into Tether within iTrust. You do that, not taxable. You pay a fee within Roth IRA, within iTrust, but you don't have that taxable event. So for me, like I just look at it and go, I'm not a big equities guy. I'm not big into stocks. I bought Amazon and Tesla, and Mara and Coinbase. So I kind of kind of know a little bit about, about those things and not that much though. But for me, I think the real wealth is in crypto and digital assets moving forward, especially with I mean with Bitcoin being the safest play. So that's it. But yeah, if they start to and also I own gold and silver and I own gold and silver within the Roth IRA at iTrust, which you can do within your account. So at least there's that. Uh, let's see. Hex is the way, T shares the win, paying transactions and pulse change, one year flawless operation, never gone down. Well, that part's true. Uh, has four and a half year flawless operation, never broken down. 
look, as much as people talk about hex and pulse chain and how awful it is, I mean, that's, I've heard the same thing. I'm not going to get into it. Yeah, I've got enough. I've got over 80 different cryptos. I'm set. I'm set for now. Um, but yeah, I mean, people will ask me about it. I'll say, they'll probably do great in the bull run. That's all I know. Diversify. Hello, Max out. And Mr. X is, Hex is a scam. But isn't everything a scam? Like, look, I could start talking about Cardano and someone's gonna say the same thing about Cardano. I could start talking about Solana and people say, well, that's also a scam because it always goes down. So, this depends. Ray says, I'm still doubtful about uh, I trust, have a Roth with Fidelity. That's good. Got an IBIT Tesla meta and now McDonald's position. McDonald's isn't going away. Go to different trust funds. Sounds good. <laughs> there you go. As long as it's again. <laughs> Cold storage, physical gold, traditional, maybe you need to, need to arm up, ramp up. Yeah, the gold, the physical gold is actually stole, st stored in the Canadian Mint. Uh, that's what uh, that's what iTrust uses. It's actually real gold. But that's if you want to do stuff like that. Some people really want to just, you know, custody gold. That's not the definition of a scam. BitConnect was a scam. That's true. Hex is a literal pyramid scheme. They can also say the same thing about most of the crypto projects out there. Not the scam part, but... Uh, pyramid. Reggie says gold in the stock market is a scam. It's provable there's not enough mined gold in the planet to cover what's in the market. True. I wonder if it's futures or not. And everything's a scam with the print was. Yeah. <laughs> Loxky says, guys at school make fun of me because I believe in in the Bitcoin holio. What can I say to these people? How can I defend myself? Just stop talking about it. And then later, you know, roll up in a nice new sweet car when everything goes parabolic. If that ever happens, I don't know. Just don't tell people. That's what, that's what I say. Like before I know like we're naturally exuberant about things like, oh, you should hear about this, hear about that. I'm going to warn it, give everybody caution, which is this, which is I've heard stories of people in 2017 telling their family to get into crypto and they do and it crashes because it's that's the four-year cycle right they did the same thing in 2021 they get into it and it crashes or they get into some kind of crazy ass project and it just goes to zero so i'm going to tell you is this if you're going to talk about things just say that what i say like i like my friend alex i'm like hey man i got this there's a new project and 99 percent of the time you're probably going to lose everything so whatever if you want to invest into it cool but you'll probably lose your shirt and that's it. There's a very slim chance you can make a little bit of money. Do you wanna do it? And most of the time he actually says yes because he's a degenerate gambler. But I give him the option. And that's, I think that's more important. So when you're talking to your family and they're like, talk to you about Bitcoin, just say super risky, very volatile. And uh, you might, you know, if your four year cycles are correct, it's gonna go down, but over time, it uh, usually plays itself out. If you don't have four euros, or if you don't have four years, don't talk to me about it. Hmm. Dr. Payne, always let me know when too late. Yeah, it's YouTube's, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, Alex, I don't think anyone here is trying to be toxic. We're trying to warn you. At least I am. Nobody in the Richard Hart echo chamber will. It's true. If you want to get warned about crypto, just go and to any uh, any Peter Schiff post or, Peter, or his live streams. They'll tell you you're a moron. Just depends. Everyone vote for, pro crypto. Single issue voter this year. Potentially, we'll see. And that's it. All right, everybody, we're coming up on an hour. So Sunday, that means that there's not much to do. Just lounge around. If you're working today, sorry. Hopefully it's uh, profitable and you love what you're doing. But that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We're going to talk about it's time sensitive. On the way out, like and subscribe. Don't forget, donate to John Deaton. We're going to talk about this probably once a week or so. 
just so everybody's aware. I do really believe he can beat Elizabeth Warren. That's it. Thanks so much, everybody. See you on the next one. Adios.